very conscious of the realm that is occupying your inner most being. Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord. Amen. <laughs> when you recognize that, man, when you speak from that place, the place of the Spirit, man, things that are in the way has got to move. No longer are you asking God, pleading with God, would you move it? You're moving it because you're recognizing the indwelling presence of the Almighty. Hallelujah. And so here tonight, rise up big. Come on, rise up big. Rise up, stay in the place, the high place. Glory to God. Seated above. Come on, a mountain is nothing. Considering the faith that you have, you've got the measure of faith. Glory to God. Just a eensy weensy portion of the explosive mountain removing type of faith that you have. Glory, just a little bit of it. Mustard seed type size uh, measure of the faith that you have in Christ can move mountains. So what is stopping you? Nothing. Woo, glory to God. Man, I can tell, you know, uh, two and a half people are thrilled by this man here tonight. Uh, you know, nothing can stop you. Woo. Hallelujah. Let's stir it up a little bit. Thank you, Lord, for the empowerment from on high. Thank you, Father, that, that, that our destinies will not be snatched from us first. Thank you, Father, we're going into the promised land. Thank you, Father, we're occupying that place that you've set us in. Thank you, Father, nothing will stop us. Amen. You know, something about barrier, barrier breakers is, um, you know, they break barriers. So uh, no matter what barrier is in front of you, a barrier breaker breaks them. Amen. Uh, something about the supernatural individuals. Anyone supernatural? I mean, you're natural, uh, but you got some super on your natural. Yeah, but I'm only human. No, 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 you're also human. I've got a strand of hair here. Look, tell me I'm also human. Uh, but, uh, but you are heavenly. You are supernatural. So whatever thing in the natural that is trying to or attempting to stop you, you got some super to deal with that natural. Because the eternal came before the temporal. So it has to submit. The natural, the temporary, must submit to the eternal. Because it was the eternal that created the temporary. So that is why you can speak eternal words to deal with that temporal mountain and see it removed, no matter how big it is in the natural, there is something unseen that supersedes the seen. So therefore, don't walk by the seen, but walk in the spirit, very conscious of the realm of the spirit, and very conscious of your position in the spirit, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Lord. I've got my wife all over me here, long, long hair. Oh, I found it. Look at that. Praise the Lord. I don't mind my wife being on me, so praise the Lord. But uh, you can go ahead and take your seats this evening and greet somebody on your way down. Uh, thank you, team, for leading us. Uh, can we give it up for them? And uh, can we give it up for them? Amen. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We also want to welcome all of those who are on live stream here tonight, those who are joining us from uh, um, far and near, wherever it is. Let us know. Uh, we're grateful that you are. Um, we want to... Look at a few things in our Bible here tonight and then pray effectively. I believe the Lord wants to do something. Before I do, uh, just share a, few, a couple of encouraging scriptures uh, for you. Um, I don't want to be encouraged here tonight. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad that the encourager is on the inside of us. I want to share with you uh, Psalms 24. Look at this. Psalms 24. Uh, I believe this is a word of instruction today. Psalms 24, verses uh, 7. It says, so wake up. Woo, glory to God. Wake up, you, you living gateways. Lift up your heads, you age, ageless doors of destiny. Woo, glory to God. Welcome the King of glory, for He is about to come through you. Anyone ready to be used by God? I'll say it again. He's about to come through you. He's about to come through through you. God wants to do something for you, to you, but also through you. Now, he said at the start, wake up, you living gateways, lift up your heads, lift up your heads, come on, you ageless doors of destiny, welcome the king of glory, hallelujah. See, our eyesight must be um, upward, not downward. We ought to be more aware and our gaze ought to be locked in on 
heavenly things or how we see things ought to be from the heavenly perspective. Lift up your eyes. (laughs) Amen, amen. Lift up our eyes and let's see it from God's God's standpoint. Hallelujah. All about discernment here. Lift up your eyes. Uh, Why? The king of glory wants to manifest himself. Glory is a manifestation of his presence. The king wants his presence to be experienced. And this is necessary for us to lift up our heads because he wants to do something, he said, through you. You ask, who is the king of glory? The Lord armed and ready for battle, the mighty one, invincible in every way. Doesn't that just like uh, crank you to track to here tonight? Does it make... (laughs) I don't know. Sometimes I'm overwhelmed by your responses. You know, uh, does it make your mop flop? Come on, does it turn 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 your buttons? You know, switch on your light. Man, it does something. See, he is invincible in all of his ways, in every way. Why? He's mighty. He's mighty, and all he's looking for is access. And from what we see here, Psalmist David, he was an expert at giving (laughs) the king of glory, the father, access. Amen. Just watch his life. Watch the favor on his life. See the anointing upon him. See, every time he acquired upon the Lord and the anointing of God was upon him and he was aware of it. He lifted his eyes. He was conscious upon the reality of of whose he was, that he had a covenant, but it went further than him just knowing he had a covenant. He was covenant-minded, and he, he, he was one who lifted up his eyes con- con- uh, you know, uh, continually. And as a result, he never lost a battle because he, he, he was an inquirer. You hear me? People saw a giant too big to fight. He saw a giant too big to miss. Perspective. He saw things that were in front of other people differently because of his eyes were lifted. To who? The mighty one who's invincible in all of his ways. Oh, glory to God. That does something to me. That does something to me. Uh, when I see him, I, 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 I got to see myself through him. And then I realize, my, the mighty one is working through me. So in all of my ways, man, I'm invincible. Uh, nothing can stop me. Nothing will stop me. Amen. The the, the mighty one is on the inside of me. I'm not, you know, I, I, I'm not having to look anywhere else. I, I found the answer. Hallelujah. I found, I found my answer here. So beautiful, beautiful words of encouragement here tonight uh, for anyone who takes it. Uh, nothing can stop you in Jesus' name. Hey, look at this, another, another passage of Scripture here. Um, Psalmist David again, Psalms 32 verse 6 says, Let everyone who is godly pray. Amen. Let everyone who is uh, godly pray. It's, it's, like, um, it, it's like James. Uh, I believe in James chapter 5, he said, he said, if anyone is suffering, let him pray. You know what I mean? Um, don't rush to, to, to uh, you don't have to get into the throne room through somebody else. Amen? Amen. You go through Jesus. Yes. So, so if you're suffering, if there's a bit of like dealings in your life, You can go direct, he said. He said, let him pray. If anyone cheerful, let him sing. I've never gone, man, I'm so happy. Uh, Mom, chill, can you like laugh for me, smile for me? Uh, Could you please sing a song for me? Because I'm so happy. Could you do my singing for me? No, if anyone cheerful, let him sing. You you understand what I'm saying? And so um, uh, here it says, let everyone who is godly pray. Pray to you. In a time when you may be found, surely when the great waters of trial overflow, they shall not reach the Spirit in Him. In other words, it cannot reach the God-man, the God-woman that you are in Jesus. It can't touch your spirit. Come on, somebody. No matter how fierce the waves, the wind, the storm, it can't reach your spirit. It can't reach your spirit. In other words, no matter what's going on in your life, in your spirit, you've still got a song. In your spirit, you've still got a shout. In your spirit, you've still got victory. 
in your spirit, the attitude of faith is still there. Let that bubble up and out. Amen. Well, I'm going to wait for the victory. You, you're not going to get victory that way. You know, you don't start thanking him once you got the victory. You praise him before you got the victory because that's how you'll get the victory. Well, you've, in, all, in all reality, you've already got it. Uh, but the way in which you enforce it, access it, is by saying, thank you. And do you know what has to align? The natural's got to align. When you respond to spiritual reality in this natural realm, the natural realm has to align to the spiritual reality that you're thanking God about. Don't ask me to say that again. I, I, but <laughs> everyone's running it down. Anyhow. And then verse 7 from the New Living Translation says, For you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of deliverance. Oh, man. What a wonderful thing. Amen. And so we're surrounded. Man, what a, what a powerful passage there uh, here tonight. I want to talk here uh, for a few minutes um, this evening. Anyone ready? Uh, anyone hungry? Can you, can, can you guys on the edges come, come to this section? That would be awesome. Please. One section here tonight. We have one section. Let's fill it. Let's fill it. Everyone from the sides, come, come on through. Um, amen. You know, I don't, I, don't, I don't mind one bit, you know, just so that I can see you all, all, this, all at the same time. That will be awesome. Come right here. Fill, fill all these seats right, 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 right on the second row here. Um, that will be awesome. Uh, come on. We've got a second row here. Look at this. Second row. We know how to count. Annie, come on, right in here. Let's do it. It's going to help me out, Eric and all those Beresford. And... Come on, come on, guys. Thank you so much. We want to get in the word a little bit here tonight, and it's going to help me if you uh, uh, come forward. Um, any hungry folk in the house here tonight? I'm telling you, we are on a life, a life track that is getting brighter and brighter. I declare you... You know, um, yeah, you will not be tomorrow what you are today. You will, you will be more sensitive, more in love with Jesus. Come on, more passionate about the things of the Spirit, more aware, uh, you know, heightened sensitivity uh, tomorrow than what you are today. Because the path of the righteous gets brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. See, even just when you are, when you are open to the sensitivity of the Spirit, and the empowerment that comes through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, he enables you and empowers you to do things um, in one month that would take normal people 10 years to get done. Amen. What an advantage. It's called the favor of the Lord. Amen. Access through the Holy Ghost. As any, could anyone testify? You know what? With, without that empowerment working in my life, the things that, I, that, that, that were done in my life couldn't have happened um, at the rate and the speed it happened um, without the favor working in my life. I mean, to have all our beautiful girls, you know, in our 20s, I mean, amazing. You know, my mom, she had, she had five kids. No, four kids in four and a half years. Do you know how, I mean, do you know what that takes? Four kids in four years? I know it's naturally possible, but man, favor of the Lord is on my mom, huh? Anyway, certain things that the Lord's empowered us to do. I was just reminiscing even, even uh, the year before we started uh, ministry and the things that the Lord did in our lives. Just in one year, you know, what, in one year, what the Lord did, I mean, it, it beat so, so much stuff, you know? God's good. I said, God's good. I declare it again. You will not be tomorrow what you are today. Amen. See, so your character improved. Anyone, need, anyone else need some? See, see how I worded that? Anyone else <laughs> need some character improvement? Anyone? Okay, there is the empowerment of the Holy Ghost who can improve us here tonight. A couple of weeks ago, I knew in my spirit the Lord was dealing with, with us about, um, about the heart, about the heart. Remember that, the issues of the heart? 
uh, out of the heart, you know, um, the, the mouth, out the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. We know the tongue is very important. It's the, it's the rudder that, that, you know, really determines where we end up. It's, it's, it's what's going to, you know, um, uh, have an influence to where we land, where we dock in life, our tongue. The, the math is so important. If you were to consider even uh, Proverbs 7, verse 7, you can see something about the heart. Proverbs chapter 7. I may be using, I'd be dipping in and out of your uh, new King James here. But it says, maybe we can look at it on the screen, Proverbs 7, 7. It says here, uh, and um, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I believe it is. Uh, I don't know if it is this. Praise the Lord. I thought it was. You know where it talks about binding? Binding the word in your heart. Man, where is that? I will find it. And I'll um, find it for us here. Write the word in your heart. Where does it say that? Verse 4? No. What verse are you saying? Man, I'm going to find it in a minute. What's this? 7-3. I'm going to find it. Man, you're working with me here tonight? Man, thank you, Holy Spirit. Verse 3. Thank you. I was, I was 4 out. Bind, what does it say? Bind them on your fingers. Yeah, write them. Write them on the tablet of your heart. What? He said, my words. Keep my words, the treasure, my commands within you. Keep my commands and live. Isn't that a precious word? Keep my commands and live. And in, in other words, this is a, his word is a lifesaver. Without it, forget it. You understand what I mean? Um, he, said, he said, keep my words and treasure my commands. In other words, you've you, you got to protect it. You got to treat it like treasure. Amen. Guard, guard it. Why? Well, someone's coming to snatch it from you. Uh, keep my commands. Why? Because they're going to try and escape you. You got to keep it. Um, keep my commands and live. And my law as the apple of your right, bind them on your fingers, write them on the tablets of your heart. In other words, uh, this word write means to record. Record. In other words, your heart is like a recorder. It records whatever you hear. And, and what's massively important, just turn, turn to Proverbs chapter 4. You know where I'm going here tonight, don't you? Uh, Proverbs 4.20. Look at this. My son, a, another instruction. Give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart. Notice that again. They, they, if, if you don't pay attention... If you don't incline, incline your ear to his saying, they, they will depart from, from, your, from, from your heart, from the midst of your heart. This is how you keep it in the midst of your heart. It says in verse 21, do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Hallelujah. That's where it belongs. That's the design of the word. It's like seed, precious seed. Where, where does seed belong? In the soil, when it's planted, then it produces. When the word is planted, then it comes alive and it produces. Hallelujah. It needs the war, like Evie said. War is symbolic of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. And so it's a bit like, you know, the word is medicine, isn't it? We could keep on reading many, many different scriptures here. I'm going to read on to the next. But how do you take a tablet? If you pop a tablet, you need to take a glass of water too. It, it helps it go down. You understand what I mean? What helps the word go down is the Holy Ghost. Hello, somebody. Keep it in the midst of your heart. How? Keep on hearing it. Keep it before your eyes. Next verse. Next verse says, For they are life to all those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues or the actions of life. 
Put away, it goes on giving further instructions, put away from you a deceitful mouth and a perverse li- let perverse lips be far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Come on, somebody. And your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet. Hallelujah. What a glorious uh, passage here. Uh, and so I want to talk about the heart. The heart is so important. Oh, man. Um, Amen. And I want to see here a couple things. Let's look at this. And I'm not going to spend long here tonight, but I felt this rise up strong. I pulled out some things that I'd studied in times past. But Mark chapter 4, this is like the basics. If we don't understand this, Jesus said, forget it. It's the parable of the sower. You hear me? Uh, and, And that whole notion, the whole passage is about the sower sowing word or seed. And the sower, the picture is God is the sower, and the seed is words. So the whole notion, the idea, God's God's not speaking to me, is not. Is it goes against what what this parable teaches? The sower sows. Um, The question is the 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 ground. The heart's not uh, 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 perceiving. It's not picking it up. It's not letting it take root. It's not yielded. It's not open to it. But the sower sows. So Jesus said it this way. I'm always working. My father's always working. How many of the Lord's been speaking even right now? Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm so grateful for this because um, uh, if you get this, then, oh, you are, you are, you are, you are on, you know. Uh, and we haven't looked at this passage for a long time as a church, but right here, I'm going to look at verse 15 onwards. Um, Jesus has shed, shed the parable, and, um, and then they're asking, if I will look at verse 13, uh, they asked, they, the disciples, asked Jesus to explain the parable. All right? And so let me, let me, let me read it here. Um, verse 13, and he said to them, do, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all parables? In other words, if you don't get this lesson, you're not going to understand anything else. All other parables, all other teaching, you're just not going to get it unless you get this. Very fundamental, so it's good to cover. Verse 14, the sower sows the word. What a statement. He's speaking. Whew, glory to God. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear it, say and does what? Saying comes when? Immediately. Immediately. What does he do? To take away the word that was sown in their, their, their hearts. These likewise are the ones sown. And he goes on to stone ground. We'll get on to stone ground in a minute. So um, uh, wayside ground. Wayside ground. These are, uh, these are the ones who, whew, my, my, my. Uh, <laughs> Their, their ground is hard, hard, so it doesn't penetrate. So it's exposed, it's not protected, it's not precious. It's people who are just really relaxed about the word. It's just like, yeah, whatever, they don't really pay attention. Uh, and so what happens? It's easy pickings. What happens? The birds come, what do they do? Woo, that's an easy meal. You understand what I mean? takes it away. Why would the enemy want to take it away? Because it's life-giving. And the devil is ultimately all about killing. So anything that is opposite to his agenda, he wants to remove it so his agenda can be fulfilled. What is it? Steal, kill, destroy. So he'll try and rid your life of anything that gives life because he's all about death. God is all about life, so he's trying to rid your life of anything that is all about death. Right. You hear me? And, and so, so this is fundamental. And you've got to realize, so uh, the devil, I mean, anytime the word is preached, you better believe the moment you get out of here, the devil's trying to rob it from you, contradict the word. The moment, um, you, you know, you see it all the way through Scripture, you see Genesis 1, 26, made in the image and the likeness of God. You see uh, shortly after uh, uh, that, a couple uh, chapters later, you, you see that the, the enemy's tactic, 
trying to twist the words of God Almighty, trying to say, did he really say that? Causing them to question what, has, what, uh, what and who they really are, made already in the likeness of God. Devil pops up and says, are you really? You know, God really doesn't want you to eat this. He didn't really say don't eat it. He just doesn't, he doesn't want you to know the difference between good and evil. And he, he, he don't really want, the uh, thing is, if you, you'll be like him. They already were. They already were. Um, Satan gets it immediately. How? Look at this. How? Anyone know how? Look at it. Let's read it. These are the ones by the wayside where the word, the, the word, the word is sown. Hallelujah. When they hear, Satan comes immediately, takes away the word that was sown in their, in their hearts. Oh, man. How? A lack of understanding. Write it, write it down. If you're taking, taking notes here. Due to a lack of, un they do not understand what's going on here. Hallelujah. Thank God for revelation. I said, thank God for revelation. What keeps us, you want, want to write this down as well. Very simple here tonight. Man, very simple, but, but life-given. What robs you and me of fruit is a lack of revelation. Is a la ra lack of revelation. So if you gain revelation, if you understand the word that's preached, then, then you'll be able to walk in light of it. Amen. If you don't understand the word that's preached, how can you walk in light of it? It becomes taken from you. This is why, praise the Lord, the devil comes to blind. Just turn to 2 Corinthians real quick. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I'm going to do a little Bible study here tonight. You okay with that? Wednesday night Bible study? Uh, look at this. Look at this. You, you know, we are not ignorant of the devil's devices. Amen. Look at this. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses uh, 3 to 4. It says, But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age is blinded, who do not believe. Lest the light of the gospel, the glory of God, who is the image of God, should shine on them. See, the enemy, because it's all about destruction, is, and as he, 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 he wants to blind you because um, the devil's lies blind and also bind. But truth, amen, that you see and realize sets one free. And so what is the devil going to do? He's going to try and cause you not to see it. <laughs> and he'll do all kinds of stuff in the natural to distract you. Even when I'm preaching like this, you're thinking about something else. Or not you guys, but you know, that there is a tendency to the enemy. <laughs> someone, someone cranks the heat in too far to the right, and it's like roasting in the room, so you're distracted. You know, little things, you know. You understand what I'm saying? His design is to rob the word. And if we're not aware of that, then we'll be just relaxed about it. We won't work with the word heard, and it won't profit us, and yet we heard it, yet we're wondering why isn't it producing? Perhaps it don't work for us. No, it does work. It's faultless. I said it's faultless. The word is incorruptible. The word works. Faith, Galatians 5, 6, works, faith worketh through love. But fundamentally, fundamentally, faith in the word works. It produces. Well, I tried that. No, 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 no. It tried you. I tried that and it didn't work. No, 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 no. It tested you out. And if you didn't regard it as precious, didn't guard it, didn't keep it in the midst of your heart, it's not going to produce life to all your flesh and all the affairs of your life. Um, it's not going to 
affect your life unless it's protected. So what are we? Are we wayward? Wayside type of... Uh, uh, um, no, we are not. We are not. We'll get onto the good ground in a moment. Amen. What's the, what's the next um, type of ground here found in Mark 4? Stony. Thank you. Stony ground. Let's read it. Verse 16. It says, These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with what? They receive it with gladness. So in other words, these are the loud, loud people in the church. So they, these are the ameners, the hallelujahs, hallelujahers. These are the ones who get excited, you know. These are the ones who go, man, preach, man, this is awesome. You know, they get emotional. And that's an okay thing. Huh? Thank God for emotions. How many know God gave us emotions? In fact, I encourage you to be more emotional in church, you know, to be like, whoa, glory. Amen. This is how, this is how you receive. Brother Hagen, he, we got Dad Hagen's last year in ministry. And he said, this is how you receive the word with joy. How do you draw from the wells of salvation? Somebody. Joy. With joy. So if, if, how are we going to draw? We're going to draw with joy. Oh, man, thank you, Lord, for your word. Man, that makes my heart glad. Uh, amen. Amen. Even if your, your body's not happy about it, you know, your mind's not too thrilled about it, because somebody know the word will instruct and correct. But if you tap into your spirit and go, oh, glory to God. Oh, man, that's for me. <laughs> Ooh, apparently, I needed to hear that. Amen. Amen. Then, uh, then it will go in. And, and, and this is good. However, however, that's a good thing. This is how you receive it. You receive it with joy. Notice, something happens. What verse are we on? Verse 17. And they have no root in, in themselves. The word gets in, but it, but, but it doesn't keep it in. It doesn't get in deep enough. It, it gets in them, but not deep in them. Why? They don't give it time enough for the roots of the word to grab them and create with them a lifestyle of walking in light of that word received with joy. Hallelujah. Why? What happens afterwards? Straight away, once again, straight away, tactics of the enemy, tribulation, persecution, arises. What, why? The word's sake. Satan knows, man, there's life in that, that seed. There's increase in that seed. Man, I'm going to stir some up. I'm going to send some messengers of Satan. I'm going to buffet them. I'm going to send just some really annoying people who are just really susceptible to my suggestive uh, ideas. And I'm going to send them across their path just to really annoy them and, uh, and, and, uh, and cause a turbulent atmosphere around them. I'm going to cause people to really dispute, uh, question the revelation they've just received persecution. I'm going to mock them. I'm going to ridicule them for what they believe. Come on, somebody. And w w what is it designed to do? To take the word out of their, their heart, because as long as it's in the heart, it produces. If you take it out, it, it quits increasing. What happens? Immediately, they stumble. So this is the moment, the moment a turbulent situation arises, moment somebody starts questioning what they've just heard, persecution, they immediately start shaking. They get offended. They stumble. Anytime you take offense, you're stumbling. Anytime you start getting offended with people, you guarantee it, you've just begun to stumble. The offense is never about the offense. It's about you stumbling. It's about you being shaken. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, man. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You're emotional. I, I, you know, emotional people, you know, people who are just rocked by their emotions, swayed to and fro. They're imbalanced, rocked 
to they're tossed, Paul said it to the church in, in Ephesus, they are tossed by every wind of doctrine. They're moved. You know, they hear solid teaching, and then suddenly they hear a, another, you know, doctrines of devils because they're not, and they're persecuted for what they believe, and, and they're tossed between doctrines. And they're moved, and, 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 and then what happens? They have, they have a crash, tossed to and fro, taken by the wind, taken by the storms of life. James said, if anyone is like that, double-minded, he is unstable in all of his ways. Let that individual suppose he won't receive anything from the Lord. You may as well say, look, uh, man, I'm just so, I'm just all over the place in what I believe. There's nothing, so, I, my belief system is not set. I can't even expect anything. I can't expect to receive anything from the Lord. Like, not a thing. This is the Bible speaking here. But we are not that type of ground. We are not the stony. Amen. This is why it says in Psalm 119, 165, it says, you've got to be, you, be quick to forgive. Everyone say that. Quick. Quick to forgive. Now, uh, let me read something from the NIV. This is Nehemiah verse 2. You don't even have to turn there. Nehemiah 2, 20. I'm going to read this. Remember, Nehemiah, he's questioned. He's doing a great thing. But, but, but persecution arises. Why? Right, to get him off the wall. To get him off from building what the Lord's put in his hand to build. And he says, as I replied, the God of heaven will help us succeed. We, his servants, will start rebuilding this wall. But you have no share, legal right, or historic claim in Jerusalem. Let me read it a uh, different translation. It says, I answered them. Who, who's them? Sambala. To buy, uh, to buy her, and the other guy was it the Gesh, Gesh? Who's the other guy? Gesham or something? Gesham, the the guys who said, "Get, you know, what are you doing building this?" And they said, he said this. I answered them, the critics, through which the persecution comes, right, by saying, "The God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore, his we his servants will arise and build." Glory, God. Nehemiah was laughed at, despised by men, but not by God. His response was, it's a great work. Whew. This is the truth. What I've been commissioned to do, hallelujah, is great. I'm not coming down. He will prosper us. Uh, he, he is prospering us for this reason, to arise and build. Hallelujah. Man, this is a better, be better message than, um, th than our response here tonight. I'm preaching, like the old time would say, I, 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 I'm preaching better than your amen in people. What was it, Brother Hagin? Brother Hagin used to say, um, you know, to, to some people, it, it, some... Uh, Praise the Lord. That's a mouthful. Or, you, you know, you're like a, like a cow at a new gate, you know. I'm joking. I'm not speaking about anyone here. You're responding. Man, we're good responders. Amen. We know how to receive the word with joy. Amen. And we hold on to it. Praise the Lord. We don't get offended by the, by the pastor or because the word's not getting snatched out of our heart. Amen. It's a great work. It's a great word. What I've heard from his word is great. It produces. It's prospering me. I'm arising. I'm going to build and frame my life. Hallelujah. I'm going to frame my life. I'll arise and build and I'll frame my life in the word I've heard. Persecution can't mess with my belief systems. Amen. Uh, contention, strife certainly will have no part of my life. I am not a stumbler. I'm not swayed, amen. I'm not moved. I'm not offended. Hallelujah. I know what he said. I will keep on building. Hallelujah. Third type. Third type of soil. Verse 18. Now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word. They hear it. However, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires of other things entering in choke the word. And it becomes, what, what happens to the word? It becomes unfruitful. Three types of weeds that try and come in. See, if the devil can't snatch it out, here's the deal. 
poor man. If the word never gets in because, it, because stubbornness is too hard, then you don't, you're not protecting it, you're not getting it in, then, then the birds are going to come and just take it, snatch it. If it gets in, but because of persecution and because of situations and you know, tur turbulent type of situation, tribulation comes, uh, and you are moved by those things, then it gets snatched, snatched out offenses, all those kind of things, what people are saying, all those kind of things, it gets snatched out of your life. You're, you're, you're hot. That's how he gets it out. If he can't get you to be swayed, moved by the storm, if he can't get you to walk in offense, he can't get it out of your heart. So what does he do? He's like, man, I can't get it out of this individual's heart where it's producing. So I've got to get some stuff in their heart to choke it. If I can't pull it out, I'm going to get some weeds in to choke it. You hearing me? Who's hearing me here tonight? All right. So what are these three things? Number one, cares of this world. Cares of this world. He said cares of this world. Uh, Philippians 4, 6, it says, Be anxious for nothing but in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Be anxious for not a thing, not a single thing. If there's any anxiety in your life, and you start getting anxious, word, fretful, you guarantee this. The word that's been sowed in your heart, be it through times like this, personal time, thank God for personal fellowship, amen. You can guarantee this. The design of that care is to grab that word that is in you, out of you to choke it, to cause it to be unfruitful. Beware of that. This is why Jesus said, take no thought concerning your life. Take no thought concerning what will be tomorrow, what are we going to wear, what are we going to eat, the needs, things. Don't think about it. Cares. You hear me? This is why it's so important. He, Jesus said, if you don't get this, you don't master this, then forget it. Forget it. You understanding all the other things. Number three, n number two, weed, different weeds. Number two, the deceitful, deceitfulness of riches. Deceit. It's deceptive to believe that um, money, riches, that new house, that new car, um, whatever it may be, will make me happy and will make me content. So the guy, I uh, heard the story of this guy who, who bought a 100,000 uh, pound Porsche. And, uh, and someone asked the guy, so t tell me what was the best part of like, you know, getting this car and getting the Porsche. And he said, the week before I purchased it was the best part of getting this car. If you are, if you are, <laughs> See, because in the mind, it's like, if I can get that car, it's going to be great. It's, it's showing up. It's brand new. You know, no one's sat in it. You know, uh, I'm, all, this, all these things, I can't wait. It's seven days. Boom. And then it suddenly shows up, and you go test it out on the M60. And you take it a little bit. I said a little bit past 70. Just a little bit. It's a sports car. Come on, let us off. You know. No, no, no. You, you obey the laws of the land. If you don't, you step out of the grace. You need the grace. There's some crazy drivers out there. So, so you drive at 70 miles an hour, you know, 70 mi miles an hour. Um, uh, and then um, you realize, my car is just like anyone else's car. It gets chipped like anyone else's car. Come on, it gets worn like anyone else's car. You've got to feed it. I felt I've got to feed this car more than all those other normal, economic, yeah. run type cars. You understand what I mean? It's just a car. And if you're not content now, without the car, you will not be content with the car. And it is a deceitfulness of riches it will deceive you in thinking you must have that. You must go on that holiday in order to be happy. You must have more money. I must get that promotion. If I don't, it's going to affect my happiness. That affects and chokes the power of the word that you've heard. It's, it's deceitfulness of riches. It, cho it chokes 
What does, it, what does the Bible say? It, cho it chokes the word. It chokes the word. Amen. Uh, yeah, it's, it's idolatry. Next one. What is it? The desire or the lust for other things. Covetousness, period. When, when in, G, in uh, Brother Hagen's, one of his, one of his uh, visions, you know, the Lord said, if, said to Dad Hagen, if you learn to follow my spirit, I will make you prosperous. Hallelujah. I'm not against my children being rich. I'm against my children being covetous. Wanting what other people want. And wondering, why haven't I got that, what they've got? Until you can be happy about what God has done in someone else's life, then you'll, you'll be waiting for God to do really what he knows you can handle in your life. Thank God, man, so-and-so has just had a breakthrough here and had a breakthrough there. Woo! Glory to God. Covetousness, lust, desire for things. You understand me? Things. Now, there's, you've got to, um, uh, you, you've got to take this in context. Jesus said, the reason I came is that you, have, you, that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So next time you get to wondering, I wonder, or next time you get to saying, I wonder if we'll have enough. Then, then you better answer yourself and say, no, we're not going to have enough. We're going to have more than enough. There's going to be a surplus. We are going to have way over what we need. Let me tell you something. If this ministry only had enough to pay our utilities, enough to pay the running costs of this ministry, there would be no opportunity to do any outreach, any giving, any supporting of missionaries. No, forget food bank. Forget uh, all the classes we do. Forget helping people in the ministry and uh, doing good, especially to those in the household of faith, benevolence. Forget, you know, all these other things. If we just had enough, all the extra ministry, you understand what, what I'm saying? We would not be able to do it. So people who have an issue with prosperity, and surplus and more, more than enough, it, it, it's an attack. They're really against ministry. Because you can't do ministry without more than enough. Yeah. Amen, Pastor Joel. Woo! Man, you're preaching. Oh, man, you're preaching now. <laughs> it is. It's false humility. Say, so, well, well, we only need. No, 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 no. There's ministry and there's surplus. Hallelujah. I said this minute, but what did Jesus warn us on? I'm going to just show some, something. Well, I haven't got time to go there. But anyway, let's see, see this, just a side point before I get on to the next thing, which is good ground, and we'll end there. First Timothy chapter 6, 6, it says godliness. Godliness, oh man. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Hallelujah. There's not enough stuff on this planet to make you content because it is deceptive to even consider that stuff can make you content eternally. You know what I mean? Come on, that cupcake, that scone with clotted cream and jam on it, man, it, may, it will make you happy for about 20 seconds. That's how long it takes me to eat it, you know? That's how good I am. It will con, con it, it will, it'll make you content just for a little bit of time. See, everything, everything is like is like a pint of milk. It's got a date on it. It's temporary. It's here for a little bit and then it's gone. It's fleeting. Everything is gonna melt up with fervent heat. In a moment you had it, next, gone. It doesn't make you happy. 
Yet it's the promises of the Lord that He gives us all things richly in abundance to enjoy. So He wants you to enjoy, but it's not contentment. You understand? It's not going to make you experience the joy that really is what you are supposed to be drinking on. I know you're getting this. Amen. But if your, if your joy levels are affected by things, there is suffocation going on, and the life, it's not there in the Word. And you don't have to question any further why the Word isn't producing in your life. Maybe there is some deception working in your life. Oh, man. Oh, my, 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 my. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Next one, verse 20. Mark 4, 20. But these are the ones sown on, who's it? Good ground. Woo! Someone say, that's me. Uh, that, that, that's me. Look at verse, you know, look, look at verse 8. But, but, but other seed fell on good ground and yielded a crop. Woo! Man, I not only take it, but I yield. There is, I produce. The word produces in my life. The word works. It yields a crop. It springs up. Amen. And increased and produced some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Woo! Woo oh, glory. What does it say next? And he said to them, He who has ears, let him hear. Let him. Let him what? Let him hear. Back in verse 20. Back in verse 20. But these are, are the ones sown on good ground. Those who heard it, accepted it, and they bared fruit. They heard it. That's how it went in. That's how it was planted. They accepted it above all of the doctrine. Amen. They, uh, they, they refused. Come on now. The tactics of the devil. They, they, they weren't concerned by the cares of this world. Man, deceitfulness or riches didn't, didn't choke the word in their lives. They, 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 they weren't covetous. And the word, that's how it sprung up and produced in their life. Some 30, some, some 60, some 100 fold. Good ground. So, three points here. Number one, number one, we choose to hear. We choose to hear. What does this say? I read it. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear. You choose that. You choose that. Hallelujah. Number two, you accept it. You can accept it or you can reject it. That's me. Praise the Lord. Amen. I shall be. Uh, I sh I, what, did, what, did, what did God say to Abraham? I am your Jehovah. Jehovah El Shaddai. Come on now. Your all sufficient one. In other words, I will, I will supply your everything. You will not, Abraham, you will not have to go to any Philistine. You will not have to go begging to anybody. I am El Shaddai, your all sufficiency. I am your everything. You won't have to look anywhere else. That's who I am for you. Woo. Never have to borrow again. So, I shall not borrow. I shall lend to many nations. I hear it. I choose to hear it. I choose to accept it. The seed. And what does it do? It bears fruit. It springs up. And what happens? He becomes my all-sufficiency. I don't have to look for anything. Come on now. Oh, my, my, so, 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 my, dear. And it's this very simple principle. It's very simple. And every so often, this is Paul, he said, I am called to service my generation's faith, just like your car needs to be serviced. Your faith must be serviced. Hallelujah. And, and you've got to check, the Bible talks about, examine your faith. Examine, am I really walking in true faith? Your faith needs an examination, needs a service, amen. And you've got to test, is the word working in my life? If it ain't working, it's not the word's fault. 
The word works. I said, it's not the word's fault. The word works. It's one of these things. Cares, deceitfulness of riches, is lust, desires of other things, covetousness. Is it just that simple? It could be your, your, the, the affliction that's rocked your boat. It could be persecution, people talking you out of truth. It could be um, you just don't get it. You just don't understand it. Um, and therefore, your heart isn't accepting it. You know, because you don't get it. You don't understand it. Um, but the word works. The word works. And any time I'm like, man, Lord, you know, uh, is this not, why isn't this producing? I know it's, I, am I really understand? Have I really got revelation concerning this? Because if I don't understand truth, then my life my life will be fruitless. Oh, Father. And there is scriptures pertaining to your family, your body, your finances, your ministry, all these things. How prosperous is my marriage? All right? How prosperous? Another question is those words concerning my marriage. How prosperous, how prosperous am I in the financial arena? All right? If not very prosperous, then how prosperous is the promises pertaining to my increase? Is there something choking it? Yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> Ooh, I'll do a Marty. Woo! <laughs> so, some of you missed that. Lift up your heads right now. I'll try and do it. <laughs> he did it a couple of times. I was quite impressed. I thought, man, his hips are lubricated. The glory to God. <laughs> He gets some DW4, he sprays his, his hip before he goes to bed. I don't know what he does, but maybe it's just the Holy Ghost. Amen. But uh, we can get happy about this. The Word works. That gets me excited. It gets me excited. The Word produces. I declare it over you. The Word works in our life. Oh, Father, thank you. Thank you. And, you know, it, it, <laughs> you know one of the things he, he said was, you know, yeah, persecution and and, uh, and what, coupled with offenses and bitterness, all these things. I mean, it, it, it messes with the word. It, it literally plucks the word out of your, your, your life. Um, why did he say that? Coupled with persecution. Because often, often that persecution comes from, from things outside of your, uh, your boat, if you will. So through the actions of others, they've rocked my boat. So now you're upset with those who've rocked your boat. You understand what I mean? So now it's personal. And uh, reading, and you, you don't turn there, but, but Matthew 7, verse 1 to 3, and verse 5 talks about you know, removing the log out of your eye before you <laughs> saying anything about anyone else's speck. You've got to repent for that. It's again what we said, when was it last week? Don't, if you see a breach... Yeah, it, don't criticize the breach. Stand in the gap. St stand in the gap. So repentance is the removal of logs, amen, within our vision. Repentance is the true beginning of seeing clearly. Oh, thank you, Father. And we need to discern in this hour. Hallelujah. I said we need to discern in this hour. Oh, that's a care. Whew, that's deceitfulness of riches. I discern it. That's, that's covetousness. Whew. See, the word is powerful. It gives life, but there's things that choke it if we let it in. If you can't get it out of your heart, it'll get some stuff in your heart to choke it. But we are good ground. Father, I want to thank you for illumination from your word. I want to thank you that the eyes of our understanding is flooded with light. We are seeing stuff. Oh, for fun and no superiority. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Yeah, yes. 30, 60, 100 fold return. Maximum increase concerning the seeds sown in our hearts in the name of Jesus. Father, we want to thank you for abundance. We thank you that, yeah, it is your will for us to prosper in all areas of our life, to be led by the Spirit and have it made in our marriages, our ministries, our finances, our bodies, our, our relationships, every area of our life. Prosperity and abundance beyond plenty. Hallelujah. Someone say that. Beyond plenty. Having more than enough. Oh, why? We have, we have one to gaze on. 
all-sufficient one, the almighty, the God who provides. So once again, I hear it in my spirit. Lift up your heads. Your ageless, ageless doors. Lift it up. Let the king of glory, oh, come on now. Let the king and his words reside on the inside of you, and you will see it. Oh, you'll be, you'll be astounded by what you will experience. Hundredfold return on the back of the seed sown <laughs> in in Jesus' name, we, 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 we pray. In Jesus' name, we declare. Oh, Father God, we rejoice at this reality. Oh, it's working. Man, the Word is working in my life. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Zingo and don't separate there. Come on, pray for the church a little bit concerning this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Beyond plenty in Jesus' name. Be, beyond, beyond, beyond plenty. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Beyond plenty. Beyond plenty. Beyond plenty in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Come on, work with the Word uh, for a few moments here, here tonight. Those who are joining us on live stream, you can uh, join, join in with us. I think I was supposed to receive the offering here tonight. We, we never actually got to that, but, but we're going to give you, a, we, you can prepare your, your envelopes in a minute. We're going to do that. But Father, I want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. We are a body. We are a people that, where the Word works. Can I have my minstrel? Can I have my keyboard player? Uh, thank you, Father. Oh, glory. Mosi Pekinais. Desi Beridia. Don Kahofidias. Bronga Horabias. Bande Fidesi Kidaya. Oh, Nekid Fidesi. Heightened awareness. Oh, concerning the things we mentioned that choked the word. High end awareness. We are not those who are ignorant of the devil's devices. Come on, somebody. We shall be a people who work with the word and see the word work. We shall be, and we are a people. Oh, we are a people. Oh, 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 say better. Who work with the word and see the word work. We work with the word and we see the word work in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Lord. It's not complicated. Just accept it. He who has ears to hear, let the word, let, let him hear the word, amen, that has the power within it to change you and renovate you and transform you. Some of you in this room, I'm telling you, there's areas of your life you are not satisfied with. And it's got nothing to do with the word. It's just about these things we've mentioned. It's got to be one of these things. So search your heart even now. Holy Ghost. Help us search our hearts concerning these things in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We search our hearts right now. Give him a moment. Mind off it. Search your heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, Lord. My sukiti kiss in my ears. Vingi nons in my. Brango hotiti fidea mando. Brango or rebiasa. Oh, rapapa paradisi. Yeah, hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Father. Oh, contrary activity, anything, anything that contradicts the word, any action of yours that contradicts the actions you really should be taking. Oh, the eliminating, I hear it, eliminating false discernment. The, the enemy would, would want to trick you to believe that you are, you are discerning correctly, uh, but really it's false discernment. You think, oh man, it's, yeah, I have nothing choking the word in my life. I'll, I'll, no, no, search. The devil won't want you knowing about it. He, he is a blinder. He blind, blinds the eyes. Father, thank you. The blinders are coming off. Right now, under the power of the Holy Ghost invested, the power of God invested in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we remove right now any stronghold, any, any, anything that's blocking sight in Jesus' name. Blind us off in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, see it for what it is. And then, and then the Holy Spirit will show you how to correct that in your life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Oh, yes, in Jesus' name. Oh, but correct discernment. Heighten discernment concerning these things, Father. We pray it out. We pray it out. We pray it out. We pray it out in Jesus' name. Thank you for liberty by your spirit. Thank you. Peace rule in the heart. 
Hallelujah, Lord. We pray like Paul prayed of, over those in Philippi. Father, thank you that your love may abound still more and more in real knowledge and in all discernment. Woo, Father, thank you. Abounding love brings pure discernment. I'm going to say it again. Abounding love brings pure discernment. Thank you. Let it be. Let love abound in each and every one of our hearts. Thank you, Lord, so that there would be pure discernment concerning these things. How can love and fear be, be in the same place? It can't. It's impossible. Perfect love, perfected love casts out fear. If anyone lo- fears, they've not been made perfect in love. For perfect love casts out all fear. Father, even right now, Father, thank you for the maturing. The maturing. The maturing. My coursing. Come on now. Maturing. The maturing of the love of God. Oh, man, go. Sikere desu, First Corinthians 14, verse... One says, uh, live a lifestyle of love like your life depends upon it. It says it like that in the message. Hallelujah. Pursue a lifestyle of love like your life depends upon it because it does. Come on, your life depends on the maturity of the love that you yield to on the inside of you. And with that abounding of love, woo, discernment comes in true discernment comes so we pray and apparently it's scriptural to pray in this way because Paul prayed I pray that your love may abound still more and more in real knowledge and in all discernment Father we pray that there, there would be an abounding of your love still more and more in real knowledge that there would be a comprehension or oh, an awareness a knowledge of the height and the, you know, the, the, the depth, the width, the length of your love. Thank you, Lord, in pure knowledge, in accuracy. Okay, in amasidosis, in discernment, that we would walk accurately, circumspect. Hallelujah, Lord. Not deceived, not robbed from our destiny because of fear. No, mature love casts all fear from the midst of us fear robs fear chokes oh no 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 thank you Lord for the casting out of those things every weed that has choked choked the word we thank you Lord it's cast out of the midst of our heart even right now pluck it out of those present those watching and those who call this place their home church friends of the ministry too in Jesus name nothing will rob the springing up of the word nothing will rob the manifold production the hundredfold fruit of your word in Jesus precious name so we pray in this manner Rango come on lift up your your voice let not me be the only one lifting up my voice in this house lift it up we contend in here we're contending for a mighty strong church where the word works every time. The word produces every time. Come on, let's contend. Let's supplicate. Let's stand up. Let's get out of the, our comfort zone for a few moments here. Oh, my, 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 Sakura. Let's get out of our seat. Oh, let's move around if we need to. But let's, let's, let, let's contend here. Oh, Ramai Sakura, dear. For too long, the enemy's got away with choking that which produces life. No more. I said no more. No more. No more. No more. It's time for fruit. It's time for production. Oh, we contend for that. It's time for fruit. This is the season. This is the hour. Oh, I said this is the season. This is the hour in Jesus' name. This, what is it the season for? Fruit. Fruit. Plenty. 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 Oh, Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Oh, where there's been a few saved here and a few saved there. Many shall be saved here and many shall be saved there. Woo! Where there's been a few filled with the Holy Ghost here and a few filled with the Holy Ghost there. Many shall be filled with the Spirit here and with the Spirit there. Where there has been few healed here and a few healed there there will be outstanding healing here 
and outstanding healing there. So don't sit and say, let's see it come. Don't sit and say, let's see it come. And when it comes, we'll rejoice. If you do that, nothing will happen. But arise, leap into the water, not just waters to wade in, but into the depths, waters to swim in. If you will, oh, the rain will come. The glory will fall. The healings will be greater in manifestation. And your heart will be satisfied. Your heart will be glad. Woo, glory to God. So go in deeper. Don't, don't, don't just wade. Don't let the word just hit surface. Let it go down deep in the name of Jesus. Let the roots grow down deep in your life. Oh, keep it there. Keep it growing and it will spring forth. Woo, the rain will fall and water the seed. Oh, and your heart will be happy. In Jesus' precious name. Oh, 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 oh. glory to God. Glory to God by your spirit, through your spirit, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We believe it. We believe it. Come on, we believe it. Not just a trickle here. Not just a every quarter. God does some of that you can say, that was not a supernatural. No, 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 no. Daily He loads you. Come on, daily He loads. He anoints your head with fresh oil. He makes you bold like a wild buffalo. Come on, nothing makes you afraid. The righteous, the righteous, the righteous. Bold, 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 courageous. A new, a new, a new air of confidence is, is on you. Woo, woo. Oh, something deep is taking place. Something deep is, is happening on the inside of you. The Word is working. The Word is taking root. Woo. The Word is producing. There's a production. Oh, glory, 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 glory. First on the inside. Manifesting on the outside. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We take, a, take, take authority. And we enforce our right to shut up every distraction that is aimed to rock boats, to cause a shaking. We silence you in the name of Jesus. Those ministers, messengers of Satan, sent to buffet you. We arrest those things that have been messing with you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we say you have no stronghold, you have no right, you have no legal right, you have no historic right. We take authority and we release the grace and we release the name, the name of Jesus. And we say His grace upon our life is sufficient to deal with you, foul, inferior spirits. And we say, get, get out. Quit it right now. You have no right to rock. Quit disturbing our peace. In Jesus' name, we see Him flee. Woo, come on, see Him flee. No, no, no more. No, 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 no more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And what will they do? They will persist. They will try and come back. What are you going to do? You're going to say no. You're going to say no. I stand my ground. I guard my heart with all diligence. I use the name. I use the name. I use my weapon. Come on, don't be armed and dangerous and don't pull out your sword. Don't be filled with his power and not yield to it and release his power. Don't carry the name of Jesus and do nothing with it. Don't carry the reservoir, the well of salvation and the rivers of life and not let it bubble out and be released like a river. Come on now. When the enemy comes in, like a flood, the spirit within you, what is it? Rises up. Quenches every fiery dart of the enemy. The spirit of faith quenches every. Don't have the shield of faith and not lift it up. Come on, somebody. 
Oh, wear your righteousness. Wear the breastplate of righteousness. Woo! Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication and the Spirit. Come on now, come on now, come on now. Take the helmet. Guard your mind with all diligence. Don't let an inferior thought linger. Cast down imaginations. Cast down those things that are trying to become a stronghold, those thoughts that are trying to become a stronghold in your life. Cast it down in Jesus' name. No, 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 no. No, no vacancies. I give you no room. I submit to God and His Word, and I resist the devil, and he flees from, the devil flees from me. Oh, I tell you what, breakthrough. This lesson alone, you do this, you do this. Oh, fruit. Anyone uh, excited about fruit? Fruit, fruit, fruit. The Father is glorified. Anyone interested in the Father being glorified? Oh, He's glorified when, when His sons and His daughters bear much fruit. Not produce. His Word produces. But you carry it. You bear it. You bear it. Oh, something on the inside. What? His Word producing in my life. The fruit of it. If you stick with it. You keep with it. You stay with it. Oh, come on now. It will begin producing. Oh, where's your Bible? Evan? Oh, I've got it up here. Praise the Lord. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> Running around all over the place. Oh, I'm grateful we don't have to run around like a headless chicken. Amen. We can have a sound mind. I said we can have a sound mind. Hallelujah. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, just stay, keep, keep this up, praying the Holy Ghost, just stir this up. First, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, it says, Do not let anyone despise you. And receive these words. Let no one, Patricia, let no one, come on, mom, chill, let no one, uh, uh, Yeti, let no one, Pastor Preston, let no one, Brother, Brother Bernard, Andre, Pastor, let no one, let no one, let no thing despise your youth. But be an example to the believers in word. Be an example to be other believers in conduct, in love, in the spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attention to reading. Give attention to exaltation. Give attention to doctrine. Give attention to it. Do not neglect the gift that's in you. Don't neglect the working of that word within you, which was given to you, hallelujah, by prophecy, spoken, spoken out, inspired, divine words, and with the laying on of hands, glory to God of the eldership. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them, that your progress may be evident to all. In other words, you won't have to convince anybody that it's working. It will be evidenced. There will be clear-cut evidence. Proof. So say proof. Where's the proof producers? Thank you. Right, one here, one there, one there, one there. One here, one here, one here. Come on, one there. P proof. Come on. Infallible proof producers. What does God want it? infallible proofs to be where on your branches come on we are an extension of Jesus we, we, we are on the tree we are a branch designed to carry fruit they will all see it evidence to to them that your progress may be evident to, to all therefore take heed to yourself to yourself take heed to the doctrine continue in them and for in doing this you will save both yourself and those who hear you Whew, whew, glory. Mara dosa berodesis. Zimanangos. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, we know all of this. Yeah. Yeah, we do. That's why we're continuing in it. Why? Because there is production to be seen, progress to be seen. Uh, hallelujah. But I know every sky could quote each and every one of those scriptures you shared tonight backwards. Yeah, good. Good. Let's go over it again. Come on, I said, let's go over it again. Romans 12, verse 2. Don't be conformed to this world's way of thinking, I like to say. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove, that you may prove, 
proof, the design of the renewal of the mind is that you may prove what? Prove what is good. Prove what is acceptable. Prove what is perfect. What is that? The will of God. You have a role to prove the will. Oh, give us proof. You, you preach, you just you preach and preach the will. Give us some proof. All right. Hey, give me a bit of space. Let me unfold my branches right here. Proof. Come, your branches full of proof. Fruit bearing branches. Come on, somebody. Oh, my, 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 my. Results. Instead of a little here and a little there. Every so often something happens and we can say that was supernatural. Instead of that just being a little bit, woo, here and there, outstanding displays. Plenty. Abundance is beyond plenty. Woo-hoo-hoo. We're taking it, aren't we, church? Who's excited about this? We have to enforce it in the spirit. We have to be diligent with it. Amen. Let's come before the Lord here tonight. We can all stay standing. I've got our envelope. We prepared this. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to sow as we leave this place.